North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is surrounded by three women who have attracted worldwide political attention. His younger sister Kim Yo-jong, his wife First Lady Lee Soju, and his mistress Hyun sung wo The three generations of North Korea's supreme leaders each led the nation into rather different directions, but the current one is the most difficult to read. The situation on the Korean peninsula is more dangerous than it has been at any time since the 1950s. Like his grandfather, Kim yo sung Kim Jong-un's regime likely is planning a strategic decision to go to war. But are they really his decisions? Who are the ones behind him influencing the policies from one of the world's most secretive regimes? Unlike the previous generations, Kim Jong-un trusts absolutely no one, but makes uses of the ones in his inner circle whose interests are tied up with his for a lifetime. Although in pop culture, he was shown as a trigger-happy goofball of a dictator and has been the subject of mockery and ridicule, but there is nothing funny about his true characters and the team he chooses to execute his orders. It is very hard to read where North Korea is heading for the past century, because since the establishment of the regime, their supreme leaders had been releasing confusing messages to the rest of the world. This type of inconsistency represents Kim Jong-un's deep understanding of the art of war, which is to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Now let's dive back to three decades ago, when a special stamp was issued by the DPRK. This special stamp was made to commemorate the famous Taiwanese singer Teresa Teng in the 90s. Why would North Korea suddenly issue a stamp commemorating a singer from a capitalist state, whereas since the founding of North Korea in 1948, the theme of most North Korean official stamps had been about either the three generations of supreme leaders, the great socialist construction achievements of the North Korean people led by their supreme leaders, or anti-America propagandas. The only other time the DPRK had implicated a friendly gesture towards the capitalist West was in 2018, when an anti-America propaganda stamp, originally scheduled to be issued, was cancelled. The widespread theory about the 1996 stamp was that the then leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-il, was a fan of the Taiwanese singer. Since the release of her first album in 1967, Teresa Teng's songs have been widely popular in North Korea. In 1995, Teresa Teng died of an asthma attack in Chiang Mai, Thailand, at the age of 42. At the time, only two countries issued commemorative stamps. One was Granada, one of the first Latin American countries that established official diplomatic relations with the Republic of China, Taiwan at the time, and the other one was North Korea. It is hard to imagine how this stamp was issued if there was no instructions directly from the communist supreme leader Kim Jong-il at the time. Besides an obsession of the singer, it was most likely since that time, North Korea developed a strategy to show signs of reform to the US and the West, separating its politics from what was happening in Mao's China and the violence of the Soviet Union during the 1960s through the 1970s, during which time there was a clear crack inside the communist allies of the East. And then, in the 2000s, the now supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, is also a fan of the so-called North Korean version of Teresa Teng, singer Hun sung wo From 1996 to 2000, Kim Jong-un and his sister, Kim yu Jong went to Switzerland to study under the aliases Park Eun and Jun Sun as the children of North Korean embassy staff learning English, German, and French amongst other subjects. At the time, North Korean authorities sent some other students of similar age as well to be the future leader's school companions. Yun sung wo was one of them. It was widely recognized that the then teenager Kim Jong-un was in a romantic relationship with Hyun. After returning from studying abroad in 2000, Kim Jong-un was sent to the Military Comprehensive University, while Yun sung wo joined the famous electronic band in North Korea's entertainment industry. Her most notable song is Teresa Teng's Sweet Honey. Her singing voice and appearances are also similar to Teresa Teng. At the time, the late supreme leader Kim Jong-il enjoyed watching performances by the electronic band, and Kim Jong-un, who often accompanied his father, became obsessed with Hyun sung wo However, Kim Jong-un's relationship with Hyun sung wo was strongly opposed by his father. Hyun was seven years older than Kim, 
and was once engaged to someone else before being sent off to Switzerland. But the real reason was most likely Kim Jong-il did not want his past to happen again to his son. After Kim Jong-il married his first wife, he fell in love with another married movie star, Song Haiyuan, who was a few years older than him. The two lived together, and Song was forced to divorce. However, due to his father, the then supreme leader Kim Dong Sun's opposition, Song was never able to appear in public as Kim Jong Il's wife. She was later exiled to Moscow. Song and Kim Jong Il's son was also later exiled and assassinated. Kim Jong Il later married Kop Yong Wei, who was the mother of Kim Jong Un and his only biological sister. Fearing the consequences of being the mistress of the supreme leader and what had happened to Song Hai Yun. Hun Sung Wo slowly fell silent in the North Korean high society and married her previous fiancé, whom she met before being sent to Switzerland to accompany Kim Jong Un. Hun Sung Wo and Kim Jong Un continued their affairs in secret, but married to their arranged partners in public. Kim Jong Un married Yi Soo Joo, the now first lady of North Korea, the mother of the 12-year-old North Korean general Kim Joo Hae. Yi Soo Joo, the first lady of North Korea, remains an enigmatic figure shrouded in the secrecy that characterized the regime. Born on September 28, 1986, details about her early life and upbringing are scarce, but it is widely speculated that her family background is wealthy enough to be a match for the supreme leader, but at the same time not enough to threaten the power of the Kim family, which was a perfect match for Kim Jong Un. Before assuming the role of first lady, Yi Soo Joo had been mostly involved in North Korea's entertainment industry as a singer and performer, similar to Kim Jong Un's previous mistress, Hyun Song Wo. Yi Soo Joo became the wife of Kim Jong Un in 2009, and the couple is reported to have at least three children together. However, besides Kim Joo Hae, details about their other children, including names and ages, have not been officially disclosed. The secrecy surrounding Yu Su Ju's family life reflects the regime's broader efforts to maintain control over information and to project an image of unity and stability to the outside world. Despite the limited information available about Yu Su Ju, occasional glimpses into her life offer tantalizing clues about her role within the regime. She has been photographed accompanying Kim Jong Un on official engagements and state visits. All her public appearances are carefully choreographed by the North Korean regime. They provide rare insights into the inner workings of the North Korean ruling elite. In a regime where loyalty to the ruling Kim family is paramount, Li Su Ju's position as First Lady carries significant symbolic weight. Her carefully curated public image serves to bolster Kim Jong Un's authority and project an image of stability to the outside world. However, the true extent of her influence and the dynamics of her relationship with Kim Jong Un remain veiled in secrecy, leaving outsiders to speculate about the family relationships in one of the world's most secretive regimes. In March 2012, the long-disappeared Hun Song Wo made a comeback, and the timing was intriguing. The second generation of the North Korean supreme leaders, Kim Jong-il, died on December 17, 2011, and his son Kim Jong-un immediately became the de facto supreme leader. Three months later, on March 8, 2012, Hyun Song-wo was arranged by the high officials of North Korea to perform on stage for the Supreme Leader. Hyun was about to give birth at the time, resisted several times, but she was finally pulled onto the stage. Facing the camera, she talked freely, stating that she wanted to have a boy, but she found out in the maternity hospital that it was a girl. The biggest attraction on that day was the Supreme Leader's happy face. North Korea's central television cameras captured Kim Jong-un smiling and applauding as he was celebrating a good news. North Korea's official media reported on the concert and mentioned that Hyun Sung Wo was about to give birth. It is very rare for the country's official media to report on the news that a singer is about to give birth. In the meantime, South Korea's media even believes that Hyun Sung Wo may be pregnant with Kim Jong-un's own child. Until this day, Hyun Sung Wo's child's identity remains a mystery. But it was clear to the world that after taking the throne officially, the supreme leader's feelings for the singer are indeed extraordinary. However, things quickly turned around. On August 17, 2013, a total of 10 members from the orchestra where Hyun Song Wo was the leader were arrested and executed. It is widely speculated 
This execution was conspired by the First Lady, Li Suju. A war between two of the most powerful women in the Supreme Leader's private chambers began. The more secrets the North Korean high societies hold, the more the public and the outside world fantasize about them. Since the North Korean palace feud broke out, both Lee Soju and Hun Sung Wo demonstrate different influences under Kim Jong Un's vision. Hun Sung Wo, who came from the North Korean leading entertainment industry and also as Kim Jong Un's ex-girlfriend, currently holds the position of Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea since 2017. It is also well known in the North Korea high society that Hun possibly had a son and a daughter with Kim Jong Un. The First Lady Lee Soju. Who came from wealthy elites already has an upper hand in the game, which is her 12-year-old daughter Kim Jue, so far the only future successor known to the public. This highlights the court battles and political complexities of the Kim family. But there's one more woman that has been long in this power play who is far more dangerous. She is no other than the Supreme Leader's younger sister, Kim Yoo Jong. Kim Yo Jong, who grew up in North Korea's privileged elite system, similar to the wife of the Supreme Leader Lee Siu Ju, currently holds the position of Deputy Director of Publicity and Information of North Korea, who has worked alongside Kim Jong Un for over a decade. She was the main figure behind the famous Korea Peninsula Union in the 2018 Winter Olympics. During that year, a unified team of South Korea and North Korea competed under the title Korea at the 2018 Winter Olympics in ice hockey. The two nations paraded together at the opening ceremony as a unified Korea. This was the first time since the Korean War, more than half a century ago, that a member of the ruling Kim Dynasty had visited South Korea. Kim Yo Jong met with the South Korean president Moon Jae-in on February 10th and revealed that she was dispatched as a special envoy of Kim Jong Un. She also delivered a personally written letter from Kim to Moon. During the game, a rare scene with the then U.S. Vice President Pence, South Korean President Moon made the name for Kim Yo Jong, the second most powerful figure just right under the Supreme Leader. Kim was later part of her brother's team during the 2018 North Korea United States Singapore summit and the 2019 North Korea United States Hanoi summit. Her involvement in diplomatic affairs continued as she issued an official statement in March 2020. From her capacity as the first deputy department director of the party, it was once widely speculated that if anything had happened to the supreme leader, Kim Yo Jong would take over as the new leader. However, since two years ago, this seemed to no longer be the case. With Kim Jong Un's 12-year-old daughter, the now supreme general Kim Ju Hye, frequently marching through all the political and military arenas of North Korea, she is now known to the world as the most likely successor of the supreme leader. Kim Ju Hye appeared in public for the first time at a missile launch in November 2022. She made five public appearances by 2023. State media initially called her Kim Jong Un's beloved daughter, but soon began using the adjective "respected," which is reserved only for the most honored members of North Korea society, such as Kim Ju Hye's parents. Some analysis believe that her new public profile is an attempt to present. The Kim family, in the fashion of an absolute monarchy, or a response to rivalries within the North Korean government, respectfully Kim Yo Jong, and possibly one of the children of Hun Sun Wo. Although Hun comes from much humble background, Kim Yo Jong possibly sees Hun as a closer ally against the First Lady. In fact, rumor has it Kim Yo Jong's biggest rival is still Li Su Ju. It is very possible that at some point in the future, Hun Sung Wo, the Supreme Leader's humble ex-girlfriend, will become one of the most crucial roles in the Game of Thrones of North Korea. Both Lee Soo Jo and Kim Yo Jong might see Hun Sung Wo as a potential ally to help defeat the other one. Therefore, after seven years of silence, Hun's visibility in North Korean politics suddenly increased since 2020. The British media has recently concluded, based on official media reports. That some of King's work may have been transferred to Hun Sung Wo, according to the recent National Intelligence Service of South Korea, there were shipments of toy guns to Kim Jong Un's residence for a teenage boy. Some defectors from North Korea have suggested that the boy may not look like Kim Jong Un's wife Lee Soo Jo, but.
but more like Hyun Sung Woo. It is also speculated that Hun Sung Woo and Kim Jong Un's son will likely make an appearance anytime soon. If that really happens, it will only be the result of partnership between Hun Sung Woo and Kim Yo Jong. At that time, Lee Siu Ju will have to face her worst nightmare, a threatening rival on the succession to the Kim regime, which for many researchers will be threatening to the whole region as well. Because many have suggested that Kim Jong Un's sister, Kim Yo Jong, is the one woman that the world needs to be more vigilant about. Theoretically, both siblings have studied in the West, so many scholars believe that both Kim Jong Un and Kim Yo Jong will support reform. However, many incidents have suggested that both have inherited this brutal absolute power. The only difference is Kim Jong Un is more subtle and roundabout, but Kim Yo Jong is irrational and extreme. Kim Yo Jong has worked in North Korea's propaganda ministry since around 2012. Since then, North Korea's statements have become more mean-spirited, including some disturbing comments she has made towards former South Korean President Park Geun-hye and former U.S. President Obama. Although this type of open hostility was rarely seen in the past decades, it might came from carefully planned strategies for the long run from the supreme leaders in their circles. Meaning, whatever hostile statements made by Kim Yo Jong were approved by Kim Jong Un. Beginning with the crucial strategic decision by Kim Il Sung in 1990, North Korean regime pursued a policy centered on the goal of normalizing relations with the United States as a buffer against China and Russia. After initial movement in that direction, with the 1994 agreed framework and six years of implementation, the prospects for success diminished when, in Pyongyang's eyes, successive U.S. administrations pulled away from engagement and largely ignored North Korea initiatives since the year 2008. In the past, even after the agreed framework fell apart in 2002, North Korea still attempted to pull the U.S. back into serious talks by giving unprecedented access to the nuclear center. However, during the Obama administration, North Korea made several attempts that Washington not only failed to probe but straight out rejected. It was during that time the world was shocked by Kim Yo Jong. Not only did she make horrific comments about former President Obama, but also exploded an entire building constructed by South Korea as a gift for less than a year ago, sending a warning to the rest of the world. The North Korean regime seems to be operating stably under the leadership centered on Kim Jong Un. But a succession system for the highest power has not been formulated, which has led to a considerable degree of instability and fragility in the ruling elite. Policy shift by Kim to greed for a war would only come after he concluded all other options had been exhausted, and that the previous strategy shaping North Korean policy since 2008 had irrevocably failed. And the three most powerful women in the regime only adds more uncertainty and complexity into the future of this nation. As a country with unknown number of nuclear weapons and close ties with Russia and China after the Second World War, though it is very unlikely North Korea will start a war of any kind as long as the Kim family's power of ruling is still intact, they can continue operating their empire behind closed doors while keeping their citizens locked up permanently. But the real danger stems from the possibility of weakened alliances and unchecked escalation in the Korean Peninsula that could spiral out of control. Kim Jong Un is considered more ruthless and threatening than both his father and his grandfather. His current position is also much worse and more complicated than the previous North Korean dictators. He has to constantly face powerful rivals within his inner circle and outside threats of the peninsula in a rapidly changing geopolitical reality. With his declining health and stress, the court battles between the women whom he trusts the most might be the last straw to bring down the whole empire. An empire with 25 million people's lives on the line, and a possible trigger for a world war starting from the Asia Pacific.